So this is what the registration form itself looks like. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through this. Um, the, the first page here just lists the graduation requirements for uh, each class. The state likes to change things around from time to time, but we are at a place right now where the graduation requirements for each of our classes and, and upcoming classes for the foreseeable future have the same graduation requirements. So here's the, the registration page. I'm going to use uh, the class of 23 as an example. That's our current sophomores rising juniors. There's two sides to this paper. The first side has the, the core classes um, that students will select. And the way that we have set this up is on the very left-hand side, students should find the classes that they are currently enrolled in. And then out to the side of that are the options that are appropriate for them to take next year based on the classes that they are currently enrolled in. So I want to highlight a couple of things uh, going on in our, in our core classes. Um, the first thing is, is important for sophomores moving to their junior year um, in that uh, as they make their choice for their English class. Uh, we ask that students be prepared to take um, the same level of English class their senior year that they choose to take their junior year. So, for example, if they want to take AP English uh, during their junior year, they need to anticipate taking AP English their senior year, dual enrollment to dual enrollment, honors to honors. Um, regular is regular, uh, though there's a little bit more uh, leeway in, in honors and regular, but we do that. Um, as a protection to, to our students, ultimately what we're trying to do is avoid the duplication of college credits with, with AP and, and dual enrollment. Um, and um, that's a kind of a, a technical thing, but uh, again, that's a, that's a protection that we have built in uh, for our students is to, is to do the, the same level of English for those two years. Students who are looking at taking dual enrollment, our own campus um, dual enrollment English class, need to take our SLS class. Uh, that's required for students who take who take dual enrollment. Some of those students might have chose to take that class as, as sophomores. If they have it, that class is going to need to be uh, one of their electives for their junior year. And we'll talk more about elect electives in just a minute. They also are going to have to qualify with, uh, with a test score um, in order to be enrolled in that class that they'll have to take uh, the, the PERT test at FSCJ. We have forms in, in guidance, so students who are, are going to request dual enrollment need to come to guidance and, um, and, and talk to us about what they need to do to get registered for, for that test. Of course, students who do not do well on the 10th grade um, ELA, the state's reading assessment, uh, are going to be placed in an intensive language class for their junior or senior year uh, in, until they're able to pass the exam. Um, the reading assessment, of course, is a graduation requirement. Students must pass that exam in order to graduate. So the stakes are very high. Uh, our intensive language class is designed to improve a student's reading skills so, so that they can pass that test. Um, so all students who, who aren't successful on their 10th grade um, ELA reading assessment are going to be in an intensive language class uh, in their junior year. For math, students need four math credits to graduate. Some students uh, brought over an Algebra I credit from, from the eighth grade uh, at, the, at the middle school. Um, so some students might not have to take a math class their, their senior year if they took Algebra I in the eighth grade. However, we generally recommend that students take an additional math class their, their senior year, but if they have one from the eighth grade, that's negotiable. Science uh, is, is similar. Students um, must have three science credits in order to graduate. So sen most seniors are not required to take a science, but just like math, we generally require uh, or we generally recommend that they do take an, an additional science. Again, you'll see the, the course sequencing out here. And then um, for social studies, Remember that freshmen typically do not take a social studies. Uh, we sort of put the state's hope requirement in that slot, and then we begin social studies during uh, sophomore year, where most students take world history, most students take U.S. history, their junior year, and then a half a credit each of government. 
and economics during their senior year. Uh, the state is, is very specific about the social studies requirements that students um, are required to take in Florida. So those are world history, U.S. history, government, and economics are required. So again, what, what we ask you to do here is find where you are on the left-hand side, and then out to the right there, you will circle with the class that you would like to take uh, based on, on where your line is. So for example, if you're in regular world history, uh, your options for next year are either U.S. history honors or U.S. history, and you would circle the one that you want to take. So that's your core requirements. Let's look at your electives now. So of all our electives, uh, this will be slightly different for, uh, for each class. Again, I'm using the class of 23 as my example here. Um, if you've done this before, this is a very similar process. Um, on these spaces out here to the left, what we're asking you to do is to rank your elective choices, and we would like your top four choices. Most students will have two electives appear on their schedule, um, but uh, and, and we do our very best to try to get students in their top two choices, but unfortunately that doesn't happen 100% of the time, and having backup options is very useful for us. If we don't have those backup options and an elective doesn't work, if it doesn't work, it, it doesn't. It just doesn't work. We're, we're not able to fit it in a schedule, and so we have to resort to those backup options. If if a student chooses not to give us any backup options, um, then we we must select those for them, and we would rather have a student's input. So again, the class that you want to take the very most, you would put a one by. Second most, you would put a two by, and so forth for your for your top four. For classes that have a little line out here to the to the right hand side like these here, those classes would need a, a teacher recommendation or, or approval uh, in order to go into that next class. So for example, uh, for students who want to take uh, culinary arts and, and move on to the culinary block um, and have successfully pleaded culinary arts one, they would need to get Chef Gass's signature in one of these lines here to, to do that. So I'll briefly talk about each one of these classes and, and what they entail. Uh, our advanced placement curriculum is, is very robust at Fernandina Beach High School. Um, we, we have a number of, of AP electives. These don't count towards any particular graduation requirement, um, but they certainly look good on, on a transcript as you're, as you're applying to college, and there is the opportunity to earn some college credit at the end of these classes for sophomores. AP European History, AP Psychology, which is a very popular um, sophomore class, and AP Human Geography. Uh, or our options there. Uh, we have our, our critical thinking uh, class, which primarily does uh, SAT prep um, as an elective. That's a half credit class. The second half of that class is a, is a career research class where students work and, and learn about um, some potential uh, different careers. They also do some leadership skills in that class uh, there. The, that class is only available to juniors and seniors. Our gifted class next year will be Humanities. That class is only available to students who have been deemed gifted by the district at some point in, in their past and have what we call an EP. Um, if you don't know what that is, frankly, there's a, there's a decent chance that you, that you don't have one uh, and are not eligible for the class. Our world languages, we teach Spanish and French. Uh, a popular misconception is that students need two years of a world language in order to graduate high school, and that's not the case. Students do not need two years of a world language in order to graduate high school. However, uh, any four-year state university, such as Florida State, Florida, Central Florida, South Florida, one of those schools uh, would need, would want to see two years of a, of a world language, uh, the same world language um, for admission there. If a student is just looking to get out of high school or they're uh, probably going to start at uh, a traditional two-year school like FSCJ, they would not need those two years. Culinary Arts with Chef Gas is a very popular class. Um, uh, remember that if students have taken Culinary 1 and they want to take Culinary uh, 2 the following year, that is our culinary block. It is a... so it students take culinary two and culinary three at the same time, uh, which means that eats up both of their elective choices. So um, 
so that's your if if you go on to that class you're kind of done with your electives uh, right then and there remember that students need uh, an art credit in order to graduate from high school uh, the courses that satisfy our art requirement are uh, the gifted class uh, digital information technology which I'll talk about in a minute mr. Purvis teaches that digital media which Ms. Jenkins teaches uh, anything that Ms. Keith teaches in our traditional art classes, anything that Mr. Odom teaches in our performing arts classes. Culinary Arts 1, despite the fact that it has arts in the name, does not satisfy the art requirement. That is a state rule. That's not something that we came up with here at FHS. However, Culinary Arts 2 and 3 would satisfy the art requirement. So uh, at some point, uh, in order in order to get out of FHS, students are going to need to take one of those art credits in order to meet the state's art requirement. Again, digital information technology is, is Mr. Purvis's class, um, uh, a very popular class. Students work primarily with, uh, with the Microsoft Office applications in there. Next year, the state is tweaking that class a little bit, and they'll spend a lot of time working um, on social media for, for that class. Um, digital uh, media with Miss um, Jenkins. Uh, this class works on the yearbook uh, and, pu and puts that together, particularly in these in these later years of the class. Uh, in that first year, they spend a lot of time working in the Adobe Suite uh, in in outfits like Photoshop and Illustrator. Our Aerospace Academy is taught by Mr. Gray, um, Aerospace Science. Um, students who take aerospace uh, a three actually have the opportunity to to possibly earn their pilot's license. Um, our Fernandina Beach High School is fortunate enough to own its own plane. There's not a lot of high schools that can that can boast to that, but we do. Um, students who take this class uh, would have to spend some time outside of school, off campus at the airport, uh, working with Mr. Gray. As they pursue their, their pilot's license. Um, not every student who, who participates in Aerospace 3 is able to get that far to earn their pilot's license, but we have had a few who have. Our PE department, these are traditional PE classes. Uh, we have weight training, as we've always had, and then we also have team sports, volleyball, basketball, and personal fitness uh, and lifestyle design. Um, Coach Schreiber, uh, Coach Willis, and uh, Coach Smith. Uh, teach teach these classes. We have our traditional art classes. Students who start out in in art uh, take kind of an introductory class to drawing and painting. Um, they spend one semester working primarily on one of those, the second semester working primarily on the other. Students who choose to continue in art would kind of choose one of those paths. They would either go towards drawing and and uh, do their their coursework in drawing or they would pursue painting um, uh, down down the road. Uh, we also teach AP portfolio art for uh, students who, in collaboration with Ms. Keith, believe that that they are exceptionally talented uh, in art and have a chance of passing the, the very rigorous AP portfolio review at the end of their senior year. Of course, Mr. Odom teaches band. We have. Uh, uh, several levels of band. We also offer jazz band um, and we also offer keyboarding. Keyboarding is a very introductory music course. Uh, there's no musical experience required for keyboarding. Um, students uh, can go in there and, and learn piano. They don't need to know how to read music or anything at all to be successful in keyboarding. Uh, that SLS class that I mentioned earlier <clears throat> that students are required to take if they're interested in taking one of our on-campus dual enrollment classes, um, this is it right here, uh, the student life skills class. That's a half credit class, so the second half of that course uh, is paired with a personal finance class, uh, which is a weighted credit. It's an honors class, uh, which we feel is a, is a great class for any high school student to, to take anyway, um, learning some things about personal finance, credit, interest rates, bank accounts, that sort of thing uh, is, all, is all covered in that class. Our Vistar class, uh, we have a bank at, at Fernandina Beach High School, and that bank is, uh, is, is operated uh, in concert with, with Vistar Credit Union. Um, students must apply to, to be in this program. 
Uh, this, uh, this class is a little tricky too. Uh, students uh, have to do some summer training in order to, to be in this class, but there is the opportunity to do some employment and actually work at, um, at the off-campus off uh, by star locations um, as, as tellers and whatnot. Uh, our bank is, is open during lunch, and so our students can come in and, and cash their paychecks or do whatever they would normally need to do at a bank right here on campus. Students who take that class operate the bank. Obviously, they're, they're learning about banking in the process. They are working during lunch, um, of course, when, when the bank is open to other students. So they take their lunch at a different time during, during third period. Um, they would do that, and then they're expected to, to basically be working during the fourth period. There's two classes that are not on here that, that are only available to seniors that I need to talk about. The first of those is CNA. Um, CNA is a very popular program at FBHS taught by Ms. Adams. This course is only available to seniors, uh, and there is an application process for that too. The state limits the number of students that we're able to have in our CNA class, so not every student who, who might choose to be in that class is necessarily able to, to get in. Um, but Ms. Adams has an has a application uh, and often speaks to the students who think they want to be in, in CNA. Um, so students can talk to their counselor uh, about that or they can, they can go to Ms. Adams directly, but that needs to happen uh, very, very soon here um, if they want to take that. Uh, OJT or on the job training is also a class that is available to only to seniors. Uh, this is the program you, you might be aware of where some seniors are at FBHS for part of the day and then they leave for part of, of the day. Um, so uh, in order to, to do that, the time that students are not here, they actually are receiving high school credit for that. We know that, that students gain valuable experience when they are when they are on a job, wherever their job may be, and so we're able to award high school credit for that. If we're awarding high school credit based on job experience, it is absolutely essential that students have a job in order in order to be in that class. This is not a um, let me uh, you know once two weeks after school starts, then I'll start looking for a job. Uh, students need a job um, from from day one in in the program and they need to work 15 hours a week. We let students go, we schedule them for whatever they, their graduation requirements are at FBHS, and then they, they are allowed to leave after that. They do not have to leave us and go directly to their job. Uh, as long as they are working 15 hours a week, they're able to do that. Uh, there's one little obligation with that class is that uh, the, the person who runs that program, her name is Tammy Roberts, meets with those students once a week at eight o'clock uh, before school starts. So note that's an hour before school starts. So um, and students do have to attend uh, that, that class. So they get they, they have to come to school one hour early one day a week, but then they can get several hours um, during the week that, that they get to they get to leave and go home early for. In order to be eligible for OJT, students must have an industry certification prior to the start of their senior year. Students earn industry certifications in one of the following courses, culinary arts, digital information technology, digital media. Um, if students do not have, have not passed their certification exams in those classes, they cannot take OJT. So it is absolutely important that if a student thinks they want to take OJT their senior year, that they take one of these courses their freshman, sophomore, or junior year and make an effort to pass that certification exam. We cannot put students in there without certification exam. We have an awful lot of, of students who uh, take one of these classes their freshman or sophomore year. Um, they blow off the certification exam, they don't do well, then they come to us senior year and say, I'm ready for OJT, and we say, I'm sorry, uh, you did not do well on that certification exam, we cannot, we cannot put you in there. So this is not a problem that we can really fix uh, over the summer between junior and senior year. There's not, the certification exams are not available. You can't take an online class or something like that if you, if you change your mind 
or something later that those programs are just not available by the by the state to, to do it that way so students have to get that from FBHS in those first three years of, of school there's a couple of other things you might be familiar with with the Bean Center um, out at FSCJ there's uh, like our EMT program and whatnot is, is housed there uh, students might choose to take some off-campus dual enrollment classes uh, as well and go to either the, the Nassau Center in Uli or even to Jacksonville to take classes too. Anything that's kind of unique or, or a little bit different in here, students are always welcome to, to write us notes on these forms and, and the spaces here or, or on, the, on the core class too. Um, these forms are, are for counselors. They don't get scanned into a computer. They don't get farmed out to a million different teachers. Uh, this is a, a tool that's really exclusive to the to the counselors, and and we um, use these tools quite a bit as we put schedules together for our students. So if there are, are special things that you feel like we need to know uh, about a student or what their goals are down the road or what they're trying to do, please, please, please feel free to write us notes on this registration form. Uh, we we definitely read those notes and we do take them into consideration. Uh, I'm sure many people have questions about these forms that maybe I have not answered here. If that's the case, feel free to, to shoot uh, myself or Ms. Coombs an email and, and let us know uh, what we're, how we can help you. You're always welcome to, to meet with us and discuss uh, things with schedule as well. Thanks a lot.